Throughout the pages of the New Testament, we meet an exciting array of interesting characters, and for many of them, their stories continue past the end of the New Testament. Today, we're going to take a look at the life of Saint Fatini, the Samaritan woman at the well. In the Gospel of John, chapter 4, Jesus is waiting for his apostles by a well. There he meets a woman who has come to draw water. What follows is the longest one-on-one -on -one conversation that Jesus has anywhere in the Gospels. A personal conversation with the Son of God is a life-changing experience, and so of course we have a story of what happened to that life and that woman that he met there. If you want to catch up on that conversation and the story, you can read John chapter 4 before you continue the rest of the video, because we're going to pick up right where it left off. The woman's name is Fotini. And this means the enlightened one, and it was a name given to her after her baptism. The Slavic version of the name is Svetlana. Because of how much we love this saint, the names Fatini and Svetlana remain popular names in Orthodox countries to this day. Saint Fatini is remembered as one of the greatest first century Christian missionaries. She is commemorated on the fifth Sunday after Easter Sunday every single year, on a Sunday that we know as the Sunday of the Samaritan Woman. Because of her missionary efforts, Fatini is given a title that is bestowed to very few saints in the Orthodox Church, and that is, she is Saint Fatini, equal to the Apostles. She is sometimes seen as the first ever Christian missionary, because right there in the pages of the Gospel, she hears the word of God from Jesus Christ, she rushes into the town, tells everyone about Jesus, and brings people to him. Fatini is not commemorated just on her own. She is the head of a family of saints. Amongst them are her sisters that she brought to Christ there in the town, and amongst them are her two sons, Victor and Joseph. Fatini and her family began their ministry after the events of Pentecost in their homeland of Samaria, and they worked there together for several years, spreading the gospel. Eventually, Fatini's eldest son, Victor, joined the Roman army, where he maintained his faith there in secret, as Fatini, her other son, and her sisters traveled across North Africa, eventually arriving in the city of Carthage, a major city in the Roman Empire. As Victor rose through the ranks of the Roman army, becoming a respected soldier, Christianity was becoming more recognized as a threat to Roman rule, and Victor was soon given a challenging job. He was tasked with tracking down and arresting Christians. Victor was prepared to just acknowledge his faith and say that he wouldn't do it, but he was approached by a friend of his who knew of his faith but was himself a Roman pagan, and this was a man named Sebastian, who was one of the authorities above Victor. And Sebastian said to Victor, please just lie low, tell your mother to stop preaching, tell your aunts to keep quiet, and your younger brother, because we're starting to notice them. If you all just keep quiet, we can ignore this. And Victor said, I I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that. And Sebastian suddenly lost his eyesight completely. For several days, Victor's pagan friend lay there wondering what was going on and called for Victor to visit him and he said to him, blind as he was, Christ is calling me. And having said that, his eyesight returned and he realized who Jesus Christ was. He realized who Victor's God was. And Victor baptized Sebastian and several members of his household. And the news got out and Victor and Sebastian were arrested and thrown into prison. In prison, Victor and Sebastian had a vision of Christ who strengthened and encouraged them, and he gave Victor a new name. He said, from now on, you'll be known as Fotinos, the enlightened one. So the son got to share his mother's name. In Carthage, Fatini, her sisters, and her son Joseph heard about this event and quickly rushed to Rome to encourage Victor in his faith. There, they too were caught and arrested. The entire family was thrown into prison together. With the entire family in prison, the Roman authorities thought this was a good opportunity to make an example of the Christian faith and try to make all of them recant it and accept the Roman pagan gods. But Saint Fatini was like a mother to every one of them, looking after them, encouraging them, exhorting them to stay strong and praying for all of them. Not only was she able to keep her entire family close to God through tortures and through torments and the threat of death, but the number of Christians in the prison grew while she was in there instead of diminished as more and more people converted to the faith. The ensuing months were incredibly difficult as one by one members of the family were brutally tortured and killed. Fatini was the last one left alive. 
Nothing could shake the unwavering faith of this woman who had once been given living water by Jesus Christ himself. Eventually, she was killed by being thrown into the bottom of a dried out well. And so it was in an interesting mirroring that her life ended in a well just as her true life had begun at a well. And that it was once again at a well that she encountered eternity. The Samaritan woman, having come to the well in faith, beheld you, the water of wisdom from which she drank plentifully and inherited the heavenly kingdom as one who is blessed forever. Knowing of her story and rereading it every single year reminds us that the living water that she encountered is available to all of us. Every single one of us is invited to have that conversation at the well with Jesus Christ. We have accompanied this episode with a chamomile and vanilla tea. It's very calming, relaxing and peaceful.